these men and women, prior to me, my getting there, but certainly since I've been there, have really stepped up the task for me and certainly for you, ladies and gentlemen. So if you would, put yourself in the seat of the officers who were in the sink building of the Blue Ridge uh, Community College, uh, March 8th. Welcome everyone, sworn and non-sworn, paid staff and volunteers. After a dark night of uncertainty and a great sorrow, we are standing here truly on the threshold of a new day. Every man and woman in this assembly has experienced the deep wounds of a trust betrayed and a leadership in disarray. This darkness has bred anxiousness and uncertainty and robbed many of your households of the peace that should rightly, rightfully fall on those who give themselves in public service. I tell you now that that dark night has passed behind you and is mere history at best. The memory of it may fade too slowly if at all, but I can tell you now with certain conviction that it has no hold on us here today. Recently I've become familiar with a saying that seems to me as profound as it is simple. It states, in the heat of battle, substance arises and renders image to total insignificance. It is in the battles and difficult times of life that true character is revealed. We learn more about those around us. Sometimes we're encouraged by what we see and sometimes we're severely disappointed. In a memo, in a memo that I sent out after winning the nomination for sheriff, I noted what I call the stoic professionalism displayed by the men and the women of the Henderson County Sheriff's Office. As the truth of the unfortunate events that brought us to that day were revealed, so too were many vicious rumors and innuendo. The sheriff's office, already staggered by betrayal, appeared to be going down for the count. What this community saw instead, however, was a department that did not waver from its noble purpose. As each of you performed your jobs under the weight of unwarranted suspicion by some within our community, your true character was also revealed by, by those who would see. By and large, the comments that I heard concerning you were sympathetic, supportive, and belied an overall trust in your honor, integrity, and goodness. The overall professional character of this sheriff's office helped to maintain a relative balance as God's grace carried you through these past days. Had there not been good character at the core, this department would have faced certain implosion. Ladies and gentlemen, I say again today, in the heat of battle, substance emerges and it renders image to total insignificance. I believe that we're beginning a new day. So many of you have hoped and prayed for a change in fortune. Still, you must know that as sure as the sun rises, we will again many times be subjected to the heat of battle. As officers of justice and peace, as those who assist in operational support, and as citizen volunteers, we're called to do battle in one arena or another for the security and the peace of our community and the safety and the honor of our brethren. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we know and accept that we are to be held to a higher standard of, of integrity and honor, higher than most. That's how it should be. Honorable people welcome the standard that brings them into a select and noble group of leaders and warriors. The badge that you wear, that I wear, that you support, even if a non-sworn member of this agency must be honored and esteemed at all times. If it is not so with you, then it will not be so by those whom we have sworn to God to protect and to serve. The badge represents a sacred trust, and the authority to carry it and support it comes from Almighty God. It is not to be taken lightly, abused for power, or to suffer the shame of misconduct by any who wear it. We can speak of brotherhood when the chase is over, after the bullets have flown, and when the fight is won. But if you don't have a life that honors this badge, then you have no place with the heroes in this hall. If you can talk about laying your life down for your brother, but you can't honor your marriage vows to your spouse, you have no place with the heroes in this hall. If the words you speak are relative to your circumstances and not to the truth alone, then you have no place with the heroes in this hall. 
Ladies and gentlemen, by virtue of your presence here today, I consider you worthy of my trust, and I believe that I have placed my trust in heroes. Still, you must know and fully understand that especially heroes are targets of temptation, and heroes, too, can fall. With one lapse in judgment, one moment of failed diligence, and the greatness of the past can be swallowed up in shame. With Yours is not an easy task. The character that your profession requires, however, is what allows the citizens whom you serve to trust and respect you. They require it. I require it, and you must require it of one another and willingly deliver it yourselves. Those who have worked for me in the past can attest that I fully support my own. I am committed to you just as I expect you to be to one another. The next several months will be key to what we are to become. It is my hope that you will find your work here more filling, more fulfilling, and more rewarding than ever before. Please bear with me and your leaders as we move forward from today. Your thoughts are welcome and your prayers are certainly requested. In order to facilitate and enhance your opportunity to succeed in your calling and in your oath, I must provide leadership and guidelines. Accountability must be established from the top down, starting with your sheriff. I've selected the staff personnel who will support our vision and who will give of themselves to support your mission. They will lead by example. They're committed to your welfare. They will be held accountable for your performance and development as officers and leaders within the Henderson County Sheriff's Office. I hold them each in high regard. I trust that you will as well. The days ahead are days of transition. It's imperative for this department that all members do their best to exhibit positive behavior and confidence in our cause. The public will take their cues from you. Your, your peers will take their cues from you. And then I ask them to look around and acknowledge the brotherhood, the noble brotherhood of the Henderson County Sheriff's Office. Ladies and gentlemen, that was met with some of, the, some of the brightest enthusiasm, and I've got people nodding their heads here, people who were there that day. Uh, I am so proud. I, um, I'm telling you as I stand here today, I hope to be back. In fact, I will be back a year from now. And just like Senator Apodaca, I'll be able to tell you all the things that we've accomplished. But as I go in there every day, I'm truly humbled by the commitment of guys who are stepping up the task who are going far and beyond what, what they really have to do, what their job descriptions are, so that they can provide for me and provide for you the level of service that you as citizens of this county deserve. So thank you, and I would ask that you give our department a hand. Donald. His chief deputy, Rodney Raines, is also here with us. Rodney, thank you for being here. Just want to let you know the president had one of his teleprompters stolen last fall. That, that, that case has not been solved yet. Police are still looking, gentlemen, for a thief that is blaming President Bush and trying to spread a message of hope. So just be on the lookout for that.